So over the past couple of weeks, I've had you work on projects that use extra supplies and ones that are more specialized, like the sidewalk chalk that you might not have had, or maybe even the paint that you didn't have. So this week, I want to keep it simple, and we are going to be making some gardens. For your garden, all you will need today is a plain sheet of paper or notebook paper if you have it, a pencil, and some colors. And you can use colored pencils if you have them. You could also use markers or crayons. Those would be fine. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing we have to do is decide for what a garden is. A garden, obviously, is a place where you plant things and let them grow. These could be vegetables, they could be fruits. Um, and so what we're going to do is have a place to put them. Usually that means we have to make some sort of um, area for them to sit with soil and that is able to have access to sunlight. In my garden, when I was growing up, my parents had one that was simply a little patch of dirt that they put soil in and let a few plants grow. This could have been tomatoes, I know they had strawberries, but they also had peas and corn too. Okay. So there are a lot of things you can plant in a garden, and I might add one more plot of land, as well as a place for them to sit on. Now as you start making your garden, you could also add things to it. And we'll talk about a few additions later and a few changes that you can make if you have the supplies and if you want to make it a little more interesting, I'll tell you a few things later. But for this, I've got my garden set up. The sun should be out and ready to go. Um, and I'm ready to start. Okay, my first plant, uh, we're going to add some corn. And corn, and you do not have to put exactly what I'm putting. In fact, I want you to get as creative as you can. Think of all the different things you could plant in a garden. But I'm going to start with some corn. Corn, usually, at the end of the season, is nice and tall. My dad used to take me out to the field that he did research on, and we could pick a few ears of corn and take them home. All right, now I've got my corn trying to think of another thing that I can add to my garden and that could be fruits, could be vegetables again, but I think let's try some fruit. Um, so fruits that you might find uh, on in a small garden might be grapes. We had to, and these could be for grapes too, um, they had to be on the vine so you had to put little vines going around and yours does not have to look like mine. Some other things you could do is invent your own fruit. Now, if you don't know what kind of fruit or vegetables grow in a garden, you can easily look them up online, or you can create your own. So, some fruit, of course, grows on trees, and if you wanted to, I would say it would be fine to add something on a tree, like an apple tree, or even a pear tree would be fine, too. They're usually much taller than the garden, but then the apples will sit up here. One of my neighbors used to have one of these when I was growing up, but we didn't often get to pick them. I think once we got to do that. All right, now I've got a few fruits. I got some corn. I might have some potatoes which grow in the ground so you wouldn't really see it but if you wanted to let's say we wanted to add like carrots okay carrots if we wanted to we wouldn't really be able to see them we might be able to see the tops of them but then under the ground that's where they would grow so if you have something like that that grows in the ground like carrots or potatoes you can simply draw it underground I know sometimes they've got there we go okay now what you need to do is come up with 
things to fill your entire garden. Once you're done with that, you can color them. Okay, So I'm going to give you a chance to do that, and I'm going to work on mine. Alright, now that I'm done drawing, I'm going to get out my color pencils because mine are very small and I want to be able to fill in that space. I'm going to actually start with my tomatoes that I planted over here. All right, so now we are at a spot where we can add a creative option if you have the supplies. One option is that you simply color the background. And if you wanted to add a blue sky or hills or mountains or something like that, you can do that. However, if you've got paper, color paper, you can actually cut out your garden and then glue it down to another paper like this blue sheet. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you what that looks like. If you don't have these options, then you can go ahead and color it and call it good. Otherwise, you can stick around and watch what I do with my background. Now that I have my garden all cut out, all I have to do is simply take that garden and place it on my background. You'll notice that I didn't cut all of this out. That's just because it is a really difficult place to cut out and those will probably not last very long. If you wanted to, you can go back with a marker or color pencil and color these areas in just to help camouflage your white paper. You can add any details you want to the background including taking another paper. I mean if you wanted to do a night sky instead you could do that and then you could take your white color pencil or crayon and simply add in little stars. And even if you wanted to add a moon, you could do that too. But this can give you a lot of different options in case you didn't want to just add in a colored background that you would hand color. This gives you an option to give you details but not have to fill in all that space with whatever material you're using. Let's say marker, then it would wrinkle the paper. Um, and this gives you an option to add stars and add different times of day and I think it's a really cool option so if you've got extra paper go ahead and do that if you don't you can stick with simply coloring and all you'd have to do is take a little bit of glue add that to the back of your paper just a dot not a lot doesn't need to be all over the place just the places that you think are going to need to be glued down and really hold it together and then Press it down carefully where you want it to go. My paper is a little bit bigger, so I can trim that down later, but I'm not concerned about it right now. I'm all done. Good luck. Thank you.